In this video we're going to be looking at the live CD install process. We've looked at the DVD and net install install process so now we'll look at the live CD and then we'll go on to look at the actual system once it's up and running. You may want to use the live CD for quickness and on most configurations it will work but if you want to install it on a bunch of different computers or you need it to be more compatible then I recommend the DVD or net install. Also you don't get the customization that you get with the DVD on using the live CD but I'll show you the install process anyway. On first glance you'll notice that it's a lot like the DVD install. You can just click next as you would on the DVD. Time zone selection is the same. and the disk partitioner is the same. I never have separate home partitions. On a desktop system I don't really understand what the point would be but on a server it makes sense. On a desktop I'm not too sure. I've never done it. Never had separate home partitions on a desktop. I always use JFS as well because it's stable and reliable and at the same time it's fast. User settings are the same. I'll turn auto login off. Now this is where it's different to the DVD install. As you can see here, you do not get the software selection that you do on the DVD. And you can't choose what packages that you want to install and what you don't want to install at this point. The reason for this is, is because the, the live CD uses an image based install. So it's just copying an image of the system instead of installing package by package. If you don't need customization or you want to uninstall after then that, that's fine, just, you just use the live CD. Also, you can't update at install time on this either, as you'll see after it's rebooted. You've got all the selection for grub and everything though, so you can still customise how the system boots, your partitioning, your system. Well, click install now. Right, it's going to install. Now, because it's image based, it's not going to give you an overview of what package is being installed when. It's just going to copy the image to the hard drive. And then obviously when you reboot, it reboots from that installed image and configures it to your hardware, which is where this automatic configuration comes into play. You can't do manual configuration on a live CD. It does it automatically, but you can change it after. Once the install system is up and running, I'll show you that. As I'll use the one that the live CD installed, just to show you. Most people will probably choose the live CD if they don't want customization. And it will install proprietary stuff like Flash and Microsoft fonts after the install, not during the install it usually comes in with a first update. It will pull in language packs as well though and I don't know why it does that but I'll show you how to unmark them never to install them again. Anyway I'll pause the video whilst this is installing because it takes about 15 it minutes. It will reboot after. It doesn't automatically reboot so you have to tell it to reboot. It then performs automatic configuration. Basically everything you saw on the manual configuration on the DVD version is being done here but automatically. It automatically configures itself here. It can take a while, it usually takes about 10 minutes. And once this is done, it'll automatically take you to the login screen. Because we chose KDE in this case, it will take us to KDM. It will show you a message about CUPS, Common Unix Printing System, being installed. That takes about a minute to a minute and a half to configure, so it does take a little while if you have a printer installed because it searches for drivers and stuff. You'll then be taken to the KDM login screen. Click your username and type your password. It will take a few minutes the first time because it loads all the KDE settings and creates all the directories.
Okay, the is now loading. And that's what the first login looks like. If you use a live CD to install, continue watching. If you use a DVD install, click part 4 to continue watching where that left off. Anyway, assuming that you use the live CD to install, click the OpenSUSE logo, go to Applications, go to System, go to Administrator Settings, type your password in. Right, if you want to set a host name, click Network Devices, click Network Settings, or if you need to configure your network, that is. For example, I'll use if up, I'll disable IPv6. I can change the host name to whatever I want, so I'll call it VBox for example. Delete that, because I'm not on the domain. Click OK, and it's just going to set that up. As you can see, it's telling me that I've disabled Network Manager. now configuring the firewall for the changes that I made. And that's that done. As you can see it's checking for updates at the moment so I won't click onto the package manager until it's finished doing that. But to do so you click software and then you click software management. You can then click software management when that's finished checking for updates and it will take you to the graphical package manager. It's going to sync with the repositories if it's the first time that you've opened it. That can take a few minutes. Now the reason that saying an error has occurred is because I'm accessing the package manager whilst this is trying to access it. You can just ignore that for the first time. The live CD pulls in some things like Java and, and Flash. You can choose not to install them or you can just allow them to install. It may also bring in some language packs as well. If it does, just find the language packs. For example, we've got we've got ES, FR, IT, etc. We could just click delete, or if they're up the top, just click taboo never install, and they'll never come down again. But apart from that, this is pretty much the same as the um, DVD and net install. So you should be exactly the same from this point on. Once you've updated the system and once you've chosen your packages, they're pretty much the same as each other and OpenSUSE will pull in any packages that you need here now, like any drivers or anything, it will do it now. Anyway, in the next video we're going to look at the rest of the system, customising the packages, adding repositories, and also changing the theme and things, just generally making the system faster as well by tweaking services, configuring YAST, exploring YAST, and looking at the default packages. Apart from that, that's all there is to it. And I'll see you in the next video.